there's a lot of effort to get back to the moon. But the question is, what is the right price tag? Hi, and welcome to GAO's Watchdog Report, your source for fact-based, nonpartisan news and information from the U.S. Government Accountability Office. I'm your host, Holly Hobbs. When NASA launched Artemis 1 last November, it used the world's most powerful rocket. That same rocket design, or space launch system, will be used in the Artemis 2 and 3 missions with the goal of returning Americans to the moon for the first time since the 1960s. But the costs of these missions are, according to NASA officials themselves, unaffordable. What could this mean for NASA's lunar aspirations, and what's being done to reduce these costs? We'll get an update from GAO's Bill Russell, an expert on NASA programs and a director in our contracting and national security acquisitions team. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Nice to be here, Holly. Bill, all of NASA's projects are pretty expensive. Why are we talking about this one? The costs for this program are important because it's one of NASA's biggest projects. It was also a cost driver in development. They had lots of schedule slips, lots of cost overruns that affected the entire NASA portfolio. So keeping an eye on how Space Launch System is doing in production is really important as they plan to spend 2.5 or so billion dollars a year on that. It seems like the first launch system for Artemis 1 would be the most expensive, right? Because they're developing the technology and they're testing it, and then the cost should come down from there for subsequent missions because they don't have those costs. Why is that not true here? Well, this is one of the, the key findings of the report is really around the transparency. Once the space launch system successfully completed Artemis 1, the tracking of some of those costs, how much does it take to build the next core stage, the next booster, those sorts of things are not tracked in the same way. So one would assume as you build something over and over that the costs would go down. Our initial indications have shown that that might not be the case, but until there's more transparency around how each of those efforts are going, it's hard to say. And we think it's really important given the magnitude of spending, we're talking you know, a few billion a year, that NASA have a better sense of the progress that they're making. So NASA makes cost estimates for its projects and it plans for those costs, right? But what's going wrong here? They do have, when they got to the Artemis 1 completion date, they put out a five-year estimate of production costs for the space launch system. They also do budget estimates and budget requests as part of their funding every year. The issue is that it's hard to isolate exactly what costs are associated with the recurring production that you need to support future Artemis missions versus developing new capabilities like Artemis 4, they're going to have a new version of the space launch system called Block 1B that's uh, bigger, more capable. So parsing out if there are cost overruns, is that because of the new system? Is that because of unexpected production costs for the old system? It's just very hard to tell. And that's part of what we found in this report. It's just that lack of transparency makes it very difficult to understand what's going well, what might need some improvement. And so NASA officials have said these costs are unaffordable. What are they doing to reduce them? They are taking some steps to increase the transparency and to try to reduce the long-term costs of the program. Those have to do with stabilizing the requirements for the flight schedule. So for example, I talked about that new, more capable version of the system that'll be needed for Artemis IV. So just Having a concrete decision that that's the plan, right, helps the contractor be more efficient into to meeting those expectations. They're also contemplating changing the acquisition strategy. So, for example, going from an environment they're in now where you just pay the contractor's costs plus a little bit of fee, no matter what happens on the program, to one where it's, we call it a more fixed priced environment where the contractor says, this is the number to deliver the system. And if it goes above that number, it's up to the contractor to cover those costs. So it shifts some of the burden to the contractor when it comes to the cost risk. 
So that's just a couple of things that they're contemplating, but it was too early to tell how those are going to pan out. Assuming these cost issues remain, what's the potential impact on NASA's plans or its schedule? Less so the schedule, but in terms of the long-term affordability of the program, just in NASA's 2024 budget request, the Space Launch System is about 37% of the anticipated cost to, to go back to the moon to support Artemis. So if that goes up a significant amount, obviously that puts pressure on the entire program. That's a, a, a pretty significant cost driver. So maintaining good visibility on what's happening with the production of the system is important to maintaining visibility into the health and the affordability of the overall mission going forward. If these programs are so expensive and are unaffordable, I think there's a group of Americans who are going to ask, why are we even doing this? Why are these missions so important? The missions certainly are important. As you saw, India just landed one of its spacecraft on the moon. There's a lot of effort to get back to the moon, to human exploration, not just of the moon, but onto Mars. But the question is, what is the right price tag for that? And it's important that not just NASA, but the Congress and the American taxpayer has a sense of what we're willing to pay for that. And as costs go up, to have that conversation around, does this still make sense for the the mission goals? So it may be that it's worth it. If SLS costs twice as much as it's anticipated, that still might be the best thing to do to achieve our national aims to be a space-bearing nation, but it might not. So just having the relevant information to, to have that dialogue, I think is important. So Bill just told us that while NASA officials know their Artemis Space Launch System projects are unaffordable, NASA also lacks some of the transparency needed to help it and Congress make decisions about these costs. So Bill, what more do we think NASA needs to be doing to address these costs? This is one where we didn't make a new recommendation because we had an old one from 2014 that really set the stage for what we're seeing now. Back then, as the program was in development, we noticed that some of the anticipated costs for production past Artemis 1 were not included in their cost and schedule baseline. And we recommended back then that they take steps to change that. So they do account for some of these recurring production costs. Fast forward to today, we're seeing some of the things that we were worried about almost a decade ago, which is that you're building multiple copies of space launch system, but you don't have a lot of transparency on how it's going in terms of the costs and what to expect going forward. So what we did is just reiterated that recommendation. And last question, what's the bottom line of this report? The bottom line is NASA needs to improve the transparency around the costs of this important program. Right now, it's hard to tell how well the program is doing in production. It's a key system to go back to the moon and beyond, and NASA could do a better job of keeping track of those costs. That was GAO's Bill Russell talking about his recent review of NASA's efforts to address affordability in their space launch system. Thanks for your time, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for listening to the Watchdog Report. To hear more podcasts, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And make sure to leave a rating and review to let others know about the work we're doing. For more from the Congressional Watchdog, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, visit us at gao.gov.